Today on Day of Discovery, In His Footsteps with Jim Cantillon. I love the miracles because it demonstrates the character of Jesus, which is the character of God, the Almighty, the creator of the universe. If we get the bigger picture, we understand that God does love us. He does keep his promises. He will heal us. He will supply all of our needs. I mean, we're going to live a luxurious life one day. I mean, everything that we think we need, we will get, but it'll happen in another world. Beyond. Yeah, we're, we're, we're not made for this little sliver of time, as you call it, the space time. You know, we're living in this kind of this capsule called Earth, space time capsule. We're made for the heavenlies, aren't we? Right. Welcome to In His Footsteps with Dave Discovery. I'm Jim Catalan, sitting right here in an authentic synagogue in Magdala, Israel, right on the shore of the Sea of Galilee a most beautiful spot with so much history. And we're gonna study some of that history in just a moment as we look at some of the scripture that relates to Jesus, miracle worker. This is miracle Jesus in this episode. We're also gonna be not just looking at the scripture, but talking to Wayne Hilston, who is the pastor of King of Kings Assembly in Jerusalem, Israel, the largest church in the Middle East. And he's gonna bring us a perspective as a pastor, but from his experience in this region, and you're gonna love him. And so we'll get to all of that right after this break. Don't forget, friends, this is the half hour you don't want to miss. Jesus, as we all know, was a miracle worker. And the very first miracle that he performed was in Cana of Galilee. And here's what uh, John chapter 2, verse 1 says. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. Jesus said to her, woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. It seems to me he was a bit petulant. <laughs> his mother said to his servants, do whatever he says to you. He'll get over his peak. <laughs> I'll talk more about the hour coming in a later episode. I'm sitting in a synagogue that has recently been uncovered by archeologists in Magdala. This is the home of Mary Magdalene, the famous woman, but it's also totally authentic. There's no reconstruction here. Everything is as it was. And I wouldn't doubt that Jesus actually taught in the synagogue just maybe three or four feet from where I'm sitting. This is an amazing site. Uh, it's relatively new and it um, is something that was not uncovered when I was pastoring here in Jerusalem back in the 1980s. Jesus was a miracle worker. Um, there were a number of miracles, as you know, that Jesus performed. And I, I certainly can't, uh, you know, go through all of them. There are so many. But I just want to highlight a few and make a, a comment or two. But before I do that, sometimes we fail to remember or appreciate the miracles in the Old Testament. I'll bet you, <laughs> if I were to ask, uh, name a miracle or two and a miracle worker or two in the Old Testament, you might be a little bit hard pressed to come up with an answer. Well, how about just the miracles performed by the prophet Elisha? For example, he was a ninth prophet, uh, I should say a ninth century prophet of Israel, uh, and he prophesied for 50 years. So he had a huge reputation, but on one occasion, he cleansed a well miraculously. Another occasion, he created with miraculous power a bottomless jar of oil. On another time, he raised a boy who had died. Uh, and this is one that might surprise you. On one occasion, he fed 100 men with 20 loaves of bread. You know, we talk about Jesus feeding the, uh, the 5,000 and then the 4,000. Well, Elijah fed 100 with 20 loaves of bread. You remember the story of Naaman, the Syrian, who had leprosy. And he came down to consult with Elisha. And Elisha told him to go and Bay, you know, immerse yourself in the Jordan seven times, and he got ticked. Finally, a servant talked him into it. He did it, and he was healed. And then there's a story of the floating axe head. The point being that even though most of our focus on miracles in the Bible is from Jesus, there are precedents in the Old Testament. Now, in the New Testament, I just referred to the one here, water into wine at this wedding in Cana. Uh, 
right near where I'm sitting, just a few hundred yards that way, is the Sea of Galilee. Well, we all know the story about him calming the storm uh, in, on the Sea of Galilee when his disciples figured they were going to die. And you know, the boats they had then were very small. They were like um, uh, rowboats, you know, with a, with, a, with a sail on them. And the storms here on the Sea of Galilee can be very, very huge. Dan, of course, I referenced this a moment ago, he fed 5,000 people just a few miles that way from Magdala uh, with uh, loaves and two fishes. He um, delivered a demoniac uh, more than one time from uh, possession uh, by evil spirits. And, and this was miraculous. It, it stunned the people when they saw him doing that. In a place called Nain, or Nain, which is about 15 miles from here, he raised a widow's son who had died, and he was her only security. She was totally bereft to lose him, but also she would be homeless and without any hope of food security. And she was mourning. Jesus came across this funeral, and he raised the son right there in the midst of the funeral procession. And then, of course, maybe the miracle that caused the most trouble for Jesus was the raising of Lazarus. Remember his good friend in Bethany? who died and Jesus didn't get to him till he'd been dead four days. Something that's interesting about that is that it was intentional because the Jewish culture believed that when a person died, their spirit hovered around the grave for three days and then fled. On the fourth day, there was no hope of any revivification, of any uh, life returning. So on the fourth day, as one of his sisters says, he stinketh, Jesus shows up and you know the story of how he raised Lazarus from the dead. These miracles were very upsetting to the established religious order. Uh, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes uh, were all um, united in their desire to get rid of this miracle worker. You know, they uh, disagreed on all kinds of things theological, but when it came to Jesus, he united them because of his miraculous work. Now, when we talk about miracles, and we learn this from Jesus' miracles and also those in the Old Testament, we're talking about a wonder, uh, a sign, a mighty act. Uh, we're talking about something that is supernatural in its power. Otherwise, it's not a miracle at all. And a miracle occurs in the context of a worldview where God is imminent, God is present. You know, uh, uh, modern um, astrophysicists are telling us these days that uh, it's not just a universe we live in, we live in a multiverse. They're talking about how there are other universes right there, if we could only see them. I'm not gonna go there, but the point is that the miraculous is something that, if you will, enters into space and time from the other side. It is an intervention of, of God, or else it's not a miracle uh, at, at all. Um, there's also this aspect to, to miracle. A true miracle, as opposed to a false miracle, uh, has to be consistent with what has already been revealed about God. A miracle is not revelatory. A miracle doesn't tell us something new about God. What a miracle tells us is that God exists and he is who he says he is. It's consistent with what we know about him already from, uh, from scripture. Uh, so there's, there's no dissonance. You know, a miracle is not some kind of weird, off the wall, uh, unexplained event you can always track back to the nature, the character, the personality of God. And if a miracle is not consistent with that, then it's no miracle at all. Because uh, there are instances in the scripture where people who were not believers were able to perform miracles. And sometimes, you know, even in modern uh, cultures in various parts of the world where there are um, uh, traditional healers and witch doctors and all of those kinds of things, there are sometimes things that happen that appear to be miraculous, but they are not consistent with what we know about God. What they tell us is that there is an evil power in the world and the evil power has power. But if it's a true miracle from God, it's going to speak positively of, of, uh, of the Lord and it's going to affirm what we know about him. It's the mighty acts of God that the scripture references when it comes to miracles. The mighty acts of God. It, uh, the biblical view is the miracle sees beyond the miracle worker, sees beyond Elisha, sees beyond even Jesus. It sees beyond to the other side, to God the Father, who compassionately intervenes in the lives of those who have need. 
The ultimate miracle of all, the resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus is the ultimate miracle. And just like I'm sitting here in a very authentic historical setting, there is an empty tomb in Jerusalem, and it's authentic, it's real. And my faith is not based on how I feel. My faith is based on that authentic, historical, empty tomb. And then the triumph of sin, the triumph over sin and death is another miracle. And that's accomplished through the Holy Spirit coming into our lives and giving us newness of life. After a little break, Wayne Hilson's coming my way. He's the pastor of the largest church in the Middle East. It's called King of Kings. And he's gonna give us more perspective on what we're talking about. And now we return to In His Footsteps with Jim Cantillon on Day of Discovery. So I'm sitting in this beautiful garden at the Mount Zion Hotel, right across the Hidden Valley from Mount Zion, um, taking a little break from the old city and loving it, sitting here in the shade. Wayne Hilson is my guest. Wayne has been with me for the last few shows, uh, talking about various aspects of uh, the Galilee specifically. He is long-term pastor of King of Kings now, has passed that on to younger leaders, but is the founder and president of the Fellowship of Israel-Related Ministries, FIRM for short. Uh, continues to speak once a month in the church, but it's really focusing on uh, developing younger leaders, especially here in Israel. Wayne, uh, Jesus was a miracle worker. And you mentioned last program that even John the Baptist was wondering if Jesus was the Messiah. Uh, and I mean, this is his cousin, you know, he right. baptized him. I mean, right. I, I'm amazed that he got insecure. But Jesus responds by saying, well, uh, the, the deaf hear, the blind see, the lame walk, the dead are raised. These were all indicators that through this, these miraculous signs, he was proving his messiahship. Uh, Jesus was remarkable when it came to his miraculous ministry. Um, talk to me a little bit about your view on Jesus the miracle worker. Well, Jesus did so many types of miracles and I think it was all to illustrate uh, the power of God, the love of God, the compassion of God, because these miracles typically had to do something with the people who suffered in some way. And he had to come into, he had to intervene in a, in a tragic situation. And you know, you think of a leper, healing a leper and touching a leper and even being near a leper, that miracle shows the compassion of God. Well, for one thing, in touching a leper, he's ritually unclean, right? Right, exactly. Uh, and then he would, you know, casting demons out of an oppressed, op uh, possessed man uh, demonstrates God's power over the principalities and the powers in, in high places. Uh, it was, it's really a power encounter against Satan himself. And Jesus demonstrates that he's greater than Satan. Uh, in other cases, uh, it's, a, it's a demonstration of his reign over the universe. I mean, being able to stop the wind and waves, peace be still in the Galilee. Uh, I mean, it, it controls the climate, yeah. you know? So I, I love the miracles because it demonstrates the character of Jesus, which is the character of God, the Almighty, the creator of the universe. And, yeah. Some of his miracles really touch me uh, as I read them. I, I think of the woman who had this issue of blood. And, and the Bible doesn't tell us what it was that was the issue, but it was some kind of a, an ongoing uh, problem, maybe relating to uh, uh, childbirth when she was young. and. Uh, you know, some of the damage that might have been done there. But her humility and her, I mean, she, she would have disappeared in the crowd, right? I mean, people probably would have, she was probably small, probably weak, uh, couldn't really get to Jesus. And yet she figures, if I can just touch the hemless garment. But surprisingly, as she does so, Jesus has a sense that someone has touched him. And I'm thinking, well, he's, he's being jostled. Right. He's in the midst of a crowd. But there was something about that touch. Yeah, somehow his power was released, and he sensed that release of his power. You know, it's an interesting thing about Jesus because he he really came as a hu in human flesh, laying aside the glory of his deity. Uh, I mean, he was still 
deity, but I mean, he, he, he acted out as, as a human being, relying on the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, Isaiah 61, the spirit of the Lord is upon me to do all of these miracles and preaching the gospel and delivering the captive and so on. Jesus, in a sense, restricted himself to live like a human, to show us that we too can do the works of God. In fact, at one point he said, greater works will we do. Yeah. That's amazing. You know, what, how do you understand that? Would they be greater, relatively speaking, in that, you know, we are not uh, fully God and fully man. And so anything the Lord does through the disciples is a wonder uh, on, on a different scale. Or right. what, what, is he, what do you think he meant by this? Well, first of all, whatever we do, how, no matter how great, how miraculous it is, it's still him doing the work. Right. So it wasn't like he just stepped aside and watch us uh, outshine him. It's still him doing the work, right? right. But I think it's greater in uh, in terms of numbers of miracles that will happen. Of course, as his followers uh, multiply, which they have until today. I mean, especially in, in places where there's greater faith and greater dependence on God, not in our, our rich Western cultures, but in other cultures where, you know, just to have enough food for the day, uh, they've got to pray about it and, and seek God's face. And that's where these incredible miracles are still happening today, just as great as the miracles that Jesus did. You know, I, I, I fully concur with you. As you know, I've been working for the last 17 years with the poorest of the poor in Africa, with orphans and widows, especially those impacted by HIV and AIDS. And um, it's been quite an adventure in ministry. But as I'm interacting with the poorest of the poor and the sickest of the sick, I see people with no food security, with no health plans, with no access to doctors, whose only hope is Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Jesus comes through for them. Yeah. I, I Sometimes I'm there with these desperately poor people and I see the joy of the Lord in them. And mm -hmm. I, I say to myself, who's ministering to whom here? I, right. I come to minister to them, they're ministering to me. I, I see their childlike faith and I see what God is doing in their lives. And it's, it's stuff that is like biblical. Yeah. There is a, a relationship between faith or lack thereof and the miraculous, is there not? Absolutely. In fact, many of the miracles that Jesus did among Gentiles, uh, it was, he was impressed by their faith. Your faith has healed you, yeah. you know? And somehow that faith, you know, we, we use faith more as an intellectual, uh, agreeing to a statement of faith, right. but really it's, a, it's trust yeah. and, or dependence right. and, and believing that God can do anything and wants to do everything. And when I seek his face, when I ask for something, uh, God loves me so much that he will come through. I mean, that kind of dependence and, and confidence in the power and the compassion of the Lord, he honors. Now, when you've been a pastor for years, uh, what, well over 30 years, not just here in Israel, but you, you, you have a pastoral history. Uh, your dad was a pastor. Uh, you, you've cut your teeth on a, on a church pew like I've done. Um, but you've dealt with people in every kind of situation, people who are desperate for a miracle. Uh, what, is it true that in most cases an immediate miracle does not occur? Uh, and if that is true, then how do you as a pastor encourage people to continue to believe for a miracle? Yeah, well, even Jesus uh, didn't instantly heal everybody. I mean, there, w there was a blind man and uh, the first touch <laughs> was I can see men, but they're like trees. Right. So, you know, that wasn't 2020 vision. No. Uh, and, and then Jesus touched him again, and he had a complete a miracle. You know, why would that be in the Gospels? Right. Except to teach us that sometimes there's a process involved. But, you know, again, that's part of faith. Faith is uh, believing when you don't see things. Right. Uh, but you hold on to confidence that God is going to heal me. And the testing of our faith is important to God. All of those things he honors. And uh, no and wait are just as much an answer to prayer as yes. Yeah. Well, you know, in the Gospels, we have this incredible story of uh, the man who needed bread. And, you know, he, he wakes up this guy 
and really hounds him until he got what he needed, right? Right. The next story of a similar nature, uh, the, the widow knocking on the door of a judge, right. and it was the persistence yeah. of asking, seeking, asking, knocking, uh, until you get the answer that, that what we were being told, that's what faith really is, and your miracles may come through your persistence in believing God, trusting Him. I, I want to just, we only got three minutes. But this, this raises a very important question. People who need a miracle, and they need it now, mm -hmm. and, and it just doesn't come, and, and, the, and the, they read the scripture where two or three agree, you know, uh, touching anything, uh, uh, and, and they forget according to my will, they forget that part right. of it. But because the miracle doesn't come, they're disappointed yeah. with God. And some actually turn their back Correct. on the Lord. Um, have you encountered that, and how do you deal with that? I have encountered that. And, you know, I think that we have to have the eternal perspective. We're all going to be healed one day. Yeah, right. We're all going to be uh, how we were designed to be without sin and without defects, without handicaps. Um, so. We have to hold on to that truth as well. That yes, we are going to get that miracle. It may not be today. And we think about what's happening right now on the earth, in our own local context, your own personal life, when eternity is forever. And this is just a little slice, yeah. a minuscule little slice of time. So if we get the bigger picture, we understand that God does love us. He does keep his promises. He will heal us. He will supply all of our needs. I mean, we're gonna live a luxurious life one day. Uh, I mean, everything that we think we need, we will get, but it'll happen in another world, in, in the world beyond. Yeah, we're, we're, we're not made for this little sliver of time, as you call it, this space-time. Right. You know, we're living in this kind of this capsule called Earth, space-time capsule. We're made for the heavenlies, aren't we? Right. And by the way, another thing about people who ask God for something and they feel that it's desperate, I have to have this. You know, as I look back on my life, I thank God that I didn't get an answer to every one yeah. of my prayers. I mean, I would have married probably somebody else. Yeah. Uh, I would have lived a totally different life because back then that's what I thought I needed. Yeah. And I look back and say, why did I want that? Yeah. I found something so much greater. See, the Lord who's, who sees the end from the beginning knows exactly what's best for you. Uh, our time is out, has gone here, but I remember as a six-year-old asking God for a pony. <laughs> Good thing he didn't give me one. Right, you would uh, have had to feed it, oh, clean up after. Oh, no, there yeah. you go. Uh, Wayne Hilson is my guest. He's going to be joining me in further programs, but um, just keep in mind, friends, that uh, when we talk about miracles, a miracle of salvation is the ultimate miracle. Absolutely. I'll take a little break here and I'll conclude the program right after this. And now we return to In His Footsteps with Jim Cantillon on Day of Discovery. I mentioned ago when I was teaching the scripture that miracles happen in the context of a worldview where God is imminent. If there is no God, there's no miracles. That's basically the, 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 the thing. And when you talk about miracles in our modern culture, people are very skeptical about it. Although they'll talk about, you know, some miraculous touchdown in a football game or a miraculous event in the, you know, in the life of some entertainer. You know, so we throw the, round, the word miracle around casually and we trivialize it. But a true miracle is something that happens in a context where God is imminent, imminent being present. He's there, he's aware, he, he has the capacity to intervene. When you believe that, then you also can believe what Jesus said when he said, with God, all things are possible. And that's why you pray for the sick. That's why you pray for some impossible situation that needs to be resolved. Now, we have to understand the fact that when we pray and don't receive the answer we're looking for, that doesn't mean that God doesn't hear us. No is just as much of an answer as yes, right? So is wait. And sometimes that miracle you're looking for doesn't occur until 20 years later when it's really needed. You thought you really needed it now, much more important then. The Lord in his wisdom knows these things because he's imminent, he's present. But the fact of the matter is, friends, that we can expect God to be sensitive 
to those urgent needs in our lives. And we must never fail to come to him with those urgent needs. In fact, when we pray for the sick, we do it because the Bible instructs us to do it. Always keeping in mind that we don't do the healing, it's God who does the healing. We are not the miracle workers, he's the miracle worker. Because God exists, miracles exist. Because God is faithful, because God is loving, because God is compassionate, we can approach him boldly with the needs that we have for miracle, whether it be a situation, a physical healing, or a change in one of our children's lives. Thanks for joining us, see you next time. Join us again next week at this same time for another Day of Discovery. Day of Discovery is a video outreach of Our Daily Bread Ministries Canada and is supported by the free will gifts of friends like you who enjoy these programs. For more information about Our Daily Bread Ministries Canada, please visit us online at ourdailybread.ca.